change your life to decide not to ever to use drugs or alcohol again to decide to bet that you're going to begin to recreate yourself that you're going to be reborn to a new state of consciousness whatever commitment that you make keep your commitment to your commitment no matter what if it's hard then do it hard but keep your commitment to your commitment and then it says thy works most people look at activity that one engages in to achieve a predetermined objective but works, commit thy works, it pluralizes, there's an S there. Learn this from Bishop. You gotta watch these things in scripture. Just can't go on the surface. There's an S, then say commit thy work, whatever task, whatever talent, whatever skill, whatever knowledge you have, and begin to make money doing that, making a difference, impacting people's lives, but commit thy work. So there's two kinds of work. There's external work, activity that you're engaged in, and there is internal work wealth good relationship peace of mind good health better community whatever you want to desire so the work is internal as well as external so therefore number one is first step is you got to live your calling you got to decide what is it you love second thing is you've got to work on yourself you don't get in life what you want you get in life what you are you have a job, you're generating $1,200 a year or $2,000 or $500,000. Whatever you earn, whatever you're producing in your life is a reflection of you. That's why it says judge a tree by the fruit it bears. I can look at what you're producing and I can tell you a lot about who you are. In order to do something you've never done, you've got to be someone you've never been. That's why scripture says you must be born again. You've got to die as you are now. You've got to be willing to give up who you are now for what you can become. When you're working on a dream, at some point in... Work as if you were to live a thousand years. Play as if you were to die tomorrow. Prayers do not change the world, but prayers change people, and people change the world. Veni, vidi, vici, I came, I saw, I conquered, Julius Caesar. You are controlled by the one who makes you angry. The heaviest burden we carry is the weight of our expectations. True happiness is not found in external things, but in the recognition of your true self. Muji How we should behave to tyrants. If a man possesses any superiority, or thinks that he does when he does not, such a man, if he is uninstructed, will of necessity be puffed up through it. For instance, the tyrant says, I am master of all. And what can you do for me? Can you give me desire which shall have no hindrance? How can you? Have you the infallible power of avoiding what you would avoid? Have you the power of moving toward an object without error? And how do you possess this power? Come, when you are in a ship, do you trust to yourself or to the helmsman? And when you are in a chariot, to whom do you trust but to the driver? And how is it in all other arts? Just the same. In what then lies your power? All men pay respect to me. Well, I also pay respect to my platter, and I wash it and wipe it, and for the sake of my oil flask, I drive a peg into the wall. Well then, are these things superior to me? No, but they supply some of my wants, and for this reason I take care of them. Well, do I not attend to my ass? Do I not wash his feet? Do I not clean him? Do you not know that every man has regard to himself, and to you just the same as he has regard to his ass? For who has regard to you as a man? Show me. Who wishes to become like you? Who imitates you as he imitates Socrates? But I can cut off your head. You say right. I had forgotten that I must have regard to you, as I would to a fever in the bile, and raise an altar to you, as there is at Rome an altar to fever. 
What is it then that disturbs and terrifies the multitude? Is it the tyrant and his guards? I hope that it is not so. It is not possible that what is by nature free can be disturbed by anything else or hindered by any other thing than by itself. But it is a man's own opinions which disturb him. For when the tyrant says to a man, I will chain your leg, he who values his leg says, Do not, have pity. But he who values his own will says, If it appears more advantageous to you, chain it. Do you not care? I do not care. I will show you that I am master. You cannot do that. Zeus has set me free. Do you think that he intended to allow his own son to be enslaved? But you are master of my carcass. Take it. So when you approach me, you have no regard to me? No, but I have regard to myself. And if you wish me to say that I have regard to you also, I tell you that I have the same regard to you that I have to my pipkin. This is not a perverse self-regard, for the animal is constituted so as to do all things for itself. For even the sun does all things for itself, nay, even Zeus himself. But when he chooses to be the giver of rain and the giver of fruits and the father of gods and men, you see that he cannot obtain these functions and these names if he is not useful to man. And universally he has made the nature of the rational animal such that it cannot obtain any one of its own proper interests if it does not contribute something to the common interest. In this manner and sense it is not unsociable for a man to do everything for the sake of himself. For what do you expect? That a man should neglect himself and his own interest? And how in that case can there be one and the same principle in all animals, the principle of attachment to themselves? What then? When absurd notions about things independent of our will, as if they were good and bad, lie at the bottom of our opinions, we must of necessity pay regard to tyrants. For I wish that men would pay regard to tyrants only, and not also to the bedchamber men. How is it that the man becomes all at once wise when Caesar has made him superintendent of the close stool? How is it that we say immediately, Felicion spoke sensibly to me. I wish he were ejected from the bedchamber, that he might again appear to you to be a fool. Epaphroditus had a shoemaker whom he sold because he was good for nothing. This fellow by some good luck was bought by one of Caesar's men and became Caesar's shoemaker. You should have seen what respect Epaphroditus paid to him. How does the good Felician do, I pray? Then if any of us ask, what is master doing? The answer, he is consulting about something with Felician. Had he not sold the man as good for nothing, who then made him wise all at once? This is an instance of valuing something else than the things which depend on the will. Has a man been exalted to the tribuneship? All who meet him offer their congratulations. One kisses his eyes, another the neck and the slaves kiss his hands. He goes to his house, he finds torches lighted. He ascends the capital. He offers a sacrifice of the occasion. Now, whoever sacrificed for having had good desires, for having acted conformably to nature, for in fact we thank the gods for those things in which we place our good. A person was talking to me today about the priesthood of Augustus. I say to him, Man, let the thing alone. You will spend much for no purpose. But he replies, Those who draw up agreements will write any name. Do you then stand by those who read them and say to such persons, It is I whose name is written there. And if you can now be present on all such occasions, what will you do when you are dead? My name will remain. Write it on a stone and it will remain. But come, what remembrance of you will there be beyond Nicopolis? But I shall wear a crown of gold. If you desire a crown at all, take a crown of roses and put it on, for it will be more elegant in appearance.
Face Endeavor. It's going to be the overriding 